Hello, I'm Lux. And correction, the budget was spent everywhere in this season. <laughs> And I'm Ember, and wow, Netflix budget, also technology. Amazing! And this is our thoughts on Voltron, Legendary Defender, Season 5, Episodes 4 through 6. Wow. The stuff we talked about before with the animation is like actually throughout the season. They are using camera angles and tricks everywhere. <laughs> They're also doing an excellent job of using stylistic kind of semi-stills where the 2D plane is kind of shifting around objects so it looks like there's layers of 3D but they're actually stylized stills with no actual motion but because of the way they shift these 2D planes around it makes it feel like it's motion. Woo! So pretty. And I really have to wonder at what game Hagar is playing, because she recruited Lotor's generals, picked a candidate for the throne, but she remembers that Lotor is her son, and she's using Shiro to keep track of him. Just in case that wasn't obvious earlier, you know, in the first three episodes, when it was totally obvious, they just made it even more obvious in episode six. Yeah, I wasn't really picking up on that until Ember pointed out to me and I'm also thinking I wonder if it's Shiro or if it's his arm because that angle looked kind of low well it doesn't matter what part of Shiro it is it's happening because of Shiro and this is where part of the personality split is coming in I'm sure because of Hagar's control and he even asked Lance about it in these episodes so he's getting to the point where he can feel it more because a lot of what Shiro's been doing isn't the Shiro we've known for the past four seasons. He seems a bit rougher and more easily to agree with Lotor. Agreeing a great deal with Lotor and instead of working to convince his team and hold morale together, being more of a dictator and going, I'm the leader, this is what happens. And man, Lotor is being way too sweet and... I don't know if you or anyone else really picked up on this, but he is being extremely pushy, but politely. He's basically dictating all of the actions of the entire Voltron team. And did you see how upset he was that he got kicked out? Not just the yelling outside, but later inside the tower when he's like, you're such a good alchemist. It just, I was not worthy. Yeah, you went the Golra route of victory or death. You needed to tap into your Altaian side. But it's okay, because you can manipulate Allura and get all the alchemy secrets you want. It's almost as good. He's being so falsely nice that you just, like, want to go up to him and go, Hi, smack, bad boy. Because it's like, I'm like, don't they notice how pushy he's being? Because every time... Like, anyone wants to discuss anything and come with any different plan than what he wants, he's like, well, no. But it makes better sense like this. Manipulative. Manipulative. But he's being so nice about it, and it's... You know, like separating Allura from the rest of the team, and here, I've assigned you a detail to take you all over the base. I'm not quite sure how much I like or dislike that comedy section of that episode. It just... It was interesting. Because I understand wanting to have a little levity. The past few episodes have been very serious. But you're on the Golra base. And your idea is to reprogram a robot and go goof around and get in trouble and have fun? <laughs> Don't you want to, like, show how awesome you guys are as palatins instead of just kind of goofing around. I mean, you're basically there as a state visit. You're the princess's entourage. And I suddenly had this odd feeling right at the end of that particular part of the episode. I was like, are we actually going to see that robot again? We might see that robot again, but I'm wondering if any of that is actually going to be mentioned again. And I had a feeling those two guards wouldn't get roped into things, but I also like the... Halt! In improper, dangerous something use. <laughs> of food preparation. 
that was great. And I was like, yeah, th those two are going to get roped into things. Mainly because we have a tall, skinny one and a short, fat one. Classic comedy duo. When I mean classic, I mean actually classic. That was like a style of thing for a while. Or you get your three stooges. Well, we had that with Pidge, Hunk, and Lance. Speaking of Lance again, we get another hint of how large his family actually is and how much he actually cares about them. It was, I miss my mom, my, my sister, my brother, this person, that person. Very large extended. And yes, there's so much space dust. I love Coran dropping down to his knees. It's filthy. <laughs> uh, also, during that whole thing with Pidge's father... It hit me. Are they actually going to somehow introduce the driving Voltron? Is the Galaxy Garrison going to build their own Voltron with vehicles? It's possible, but is the Gulra Empire headed anywhere towards Earth? And Earth is going to be primarily focused, you would think, on building up its own defense system before it sends anything out. But yes, they might try to recreate Voltron, but without access to the special material that Voltron's made out of, what are they going to manage to build? I don't know, but it just struck me as like, wait a minute, could they actually be trying to do a car Voltron with the Galaxy Garrison? Because the father now knows a lot of extra technology, and he's seen how powerful Voltron is. Could he like get together with a bunch of scientists on Earth and go, we can't build something exactly like Voltron? But I've seen what something like Voltron can do. Let's see what we can recreate. And not just the fact that he's seen a lot about Voltron, but the amount of time he spent in the space prison working with other scientists. So he's picked up lots of different technologies. The ship he's taking back is more advanced than any ship on Earth. Just reverse engineering that ship to get the technologies of it once he gets back to Galaxy Garrison. Yeah, that just like struck me like, ooh, that's an idea <laughs> for future seasons. Also, so many interesting things happening at the, I will be emperor. No, I will be emperor. And Lux and I were both thinking the same thing. Why isn't somebody else grabbing a torch and running up while everybody else is busy watching the main people fight? Because apparently whoever lights the torch wins. That's the goal. That's the end thing. You don't actually have to fight everyone there to get to it. If everyone's fighting everyone else, grab the torch and run up the stairs. Most people probably won't even notice you went, I win. And the Academus was there to verify it. So you don't have to worry about that nobody saw you do it. And I also went, I wonder, could Keith? He, he's technically Galra, so wouldn't he count? I almost was like thinking Keith might do it completely by accident. Like grab the torch from low tour or something and go, Pfft. um, uh, am, am I, I'm, I'm king now, right? Oops. Well, for first thing, I mean... everybody stop fighting. Also the nice touch of that one lady finally giving Keith a little bit of payback. In a good way. And of course the reveal of who Keith's mother was. Which basically, as soon as they showed the shot on screen of, this is who your contact is, oh, he's going to get to meet his mother. Also, why send Keith on this mission? You have plenty of Blade of Malmora members, and you're warning Keith about his emotions. And we just saw, you know, the last thing that he was on, that he let his emotions get in the way because he stopped a bunch of the charges and also ran out and like protected Lotor. Though what's really funny is that we actually haven't quite confirmed it yet because we never cut back to her actually saying I'm your mom after Keith goes you're my because they cut before he even says a thing and I jokingly said hey maybe she's like I give this to your father to celebrate my sister's marriage to him. <laughs> yeah yeah that would be funny because just because you know she gave it to your father doesn't necessarily mean, except it totally means, because she left once, not going to leave you again. And also the whole thing, I didn't give them the weapon. I gave them to the weapon. Oof. Um, so that means it's going to come into play later. Yes, yes, somehow it's going to figure out how to get off the planet, or someone's going to manage to contain it long enough to transport it. Also for a second there, I thought the facility itself was the weapon. I thought that. And then I also thought that maybe... 
it was just a thing of quintessence and she actually had it on her. But I'm like, that doesn't make sense because she was getting Keith to the other console to enter the codes. And she wouldn't do that if she already had it on her because the room hadn't been breached yet. So there was no need to put up a front. And I think she actually knows a way to control the creature too. Probably. That's the part she left out because you don't always give away all of your secrets, especially when you're negotiating. You never tell them everything. You always hold something back. It was obvious that as soon as they had the codes, they were going to shoot the ship down. Also, I'd like to know how she managed to so instantly recognize Keith. Because how long ago did she leave? Yeah, I think it was more like the blade. Because, you know, she kind of looked at the blade first and went, hmm. But that's not 100% proof because someone else could have gotten the blade. Also, Keith was back on Earth. So, one, you know, wondering how the blade all got all the way out there. And two, my, still my original question. Um, excuse me, Keith's mom, how did you get all the way to Earth and stay there long enough to, um, yeah? I have a kid, drop him off, decide to leave, you know, that thing. I would love to know. Especially since the Kara don't seem to know about Earth, kind of, because they kind of ended up partially there to kidnap them, or was that like on the outskirts of our galaxy or universe? That was further out, because they were an exploration mission, so they weren't like super close to Earth. It's going to be so interesting. They're, they're leaving us so many clues to like ideas they have. I really hope Netflix continues to give them a budget and doesn't mess with them too much. <laughs> Because they have messed with them a little bit by making their seasons shorter. Cutting them down to what they have determined people tend to binge watch in one sitting. It's also them wanting to get more content out quickly. So basically like, oh, you have six episodes finished right now? Okay, put those out. Any other points you'd like to go over? Because I'm just randomly thinking of like, oh yeah, this scene. Oh, and this scene. <laughs> the entire thing with the white lion. Oh, yeah. Because if I recall correctly, in 80s Voltron, the white lion was actually a ruse. The princess thought that her father's spirit came to her in the form of a white lion. And the white lion actually kidnapped her. It was one of Hagar's creatures. Hmm. Though now that I think about it, Lotor kind of explained that the whole why he and Alora were picked to go in and get final tested. Because his mother was incredibly powerful. Now, the real question is, since she's headed that direction, speaking of his mother, is she going to get in? I'm going to say no. I think she'll get in, but she won't pass the test. There's no way she can pass the test. I mean, she doesn't have the stone. How is she even going to get past the Guardians? Because Allura offered the stone to the Guardians. Mm. And that got them past that first section. And then when she activated the teledub, that was their final test facing the attacks of the White Lion Guardian. I was originally wondering if they were just, if Voltron was getting rejected specifically because of Shiro. But, and then when Lotor had the glowing marks, I wondered if only Lotor could actually get in and not Allura. I'm like, oh, that would be an interesting twist. That Lotor is chosen and Allura is not. But it was basically, no, they're not Altaian, therefore there's no way you're getting in. And because you're with these non-Altaians, you're getting attacked too. Also, that may be part of the test too. Like, oh, you're using technology to make a big advantage for you? Yeah, no. It's kind of like in this episode of Star Trek Next Generation where Picard and crew find a kid who was rescued from a um, starship that was destroyed by this weird field that they ran into. And what you find out once they get into the field is as they're getting into this field, they keep getting hit by these waves of energy and the waves of energy keep getting stronger. So they keep increasing their shields. And every time they increase their shields, the waves get stronger. And um, because the kid's on board, he the kid actually thought that he destroyed the ship because with one of the waves, he hit a panel of buttons at the same time, his ship got destroyed, so he thought he was the one who did it. That's why um, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the episode with the kid dealing with this. And the kid's on the bridge at the time when they're repeating the same thing, and the kid is saying this with Data nearby, and Data goes, hmm, Captain, I have an idea. 
goes over to the console and turns off the shields. They're fine. The field was reacting to force. The more energy they put out to protect themselves and defend themselves, the more it hit back with the same amount, if not greater, energy. So the more energy you put into the shields, the more damage you took. So I was thinking maybe it's something like that. Since they're coming with force and they're trying to attack it, it's going to go, no. Except that they didn't initially attack. They only went forward. And then they were attacked. And then instead of retreating or showing themselves calmly, they returned fire. Because I was immediately like, why are you guys shooting lasers? This is a bad idea. Altaian. Lion. Lion good. <laughs> Wow, these episodes not only looked good, but there was a lot of story going on and a lot of trying to figure out the phrasing, but a lot of path laid for future story arcs. Build up, that's what I was looking for. There's a lot of build up and laying down foundations for story elements yet to come in the next season. Because <laughs> there is like so much I'm like, hmm, like, oh, I think they're doing this. Oh, they're thinking of doing this. I have a theory about that. Ooh, I have a theory about that. Oh, no. No, look at this deck of theories. No. <laughs> I'll be careful about that. It's going to fall over. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> and just the differences between Lotor and Allura when it came to the final challenge. Because I'm like, Lotor, what are you? No, don't quote the Galra, Lotor. Actually, yes, quote the Galra because I want you to fail on this, but... What are you doing? Because Allura totally got it. She was dodging, not fighting. She surrendered, which was the correct choice because she came as a supplicant, not as a conqueror. Yeah, I was thinking that in the entire time. I was like, ooh, he's fighting back. That's bad. <laughs> also, I was just curious, like, because of the way they're playing him right now, I was like, I don't trust him, but are they doing that to trick us are the writers literally doing that to trick us that he's actually trying to actually go for peace but because he's being so sleazy about it because of how he's had to been for his entire life in the Galra empire that it's just coming off this way but he's actually sincere about what he wants to accomplish but right now based on what currently happened i'm like yeah he's eventually going to get that infinite quintessence and f up everyone Pretty much, because it's not just about gathering quintessence as an energy source, because there are lots of energy sources. The quintessence has a lot more that it can do than just power a ship. Not to mention there's a bunch of bad things in that dimension where the quintessence comes from. So reopening and reaccessing that field is a bad idea, because... It was the widening of that breach on the original Galra planet that caused its destruction. And being exposed to a lot of quintessence, especially from that rift, kind of made people go a little crazy and paranoid. Just a tad, because look at both Zarkon and Hagar. So you really have to wonder, it's like, does Lotor know what he's getting into or not? Because how much he knows about how things could go kind of determines how sleazy he is and how duplicitous. Because if he's doing it in full knowledge of the danger, then he's a sleaze bag. If he really thinks what he's saying is true, that this is a way to safely get quintessence without destroying worlds. Also, okay, once you have all the power in the universe, why wouldn't you just go conquer everybody? You have all the power in the universe. Because... You know, he claimed to have returned the Black Lion to the Golra because the Black Lion dropped him off. So Shiro has definitely shifted allegiance there. Like I said, Hagar Puppet. It's going to be real interesting in the next season. It's really interesting in this season, especially since this didn't feel like an ending to a season. I have a feeling season five and season six are technically season five. Or actually season four, because season four was part of season three. So that's the thing, we're getting the seasons in half arcs because I think the overall writing is still following a more traditional episode length format. Because this was not a finale, this felt more like a midpoint. Because, okay, the good guys have achieved a goal. The bad guys are on their way to achieve the same goal. How is this going to play out? 
and another one-on-one -on -one battle with Hagar and Allura looks like it could be in the finale of the season, mm -hmm. proper season finale. Or a battle between Hagar, Lotor, and Allura. And I don't mean Lotor and Allura versus Hagar, I mean all of them against each other. An actual three-way. Nobody is on anybody's side because Lotor betrayed Allura. Allura already knows that Hagar is Altaian and considers her a traitor for working with the Galra with all this time. Especially with the way she's been working with the Galra. And now that she kind of knows that Hagar is Lotor's mom, hmm. that might change up some stuff. Allura speculated. Lotor sounds like he knows. Allura speculated, but does not have confirmation. But we know. Like you said, I think I have a feeling Lotor knows, but he's rejecting it because of how she is now. Well, you know, there aren't that many Altaians around 10,000 years ago for Zarkon to have conceived a child with. Just kind of interesting. Though odd things about, well not odd things, but things about nature just pop into my head. Like Keith and Lotor, are they sterile? Because they're kind of like ligers. Or mules, half-breeds between two species. That are genetically compatible enough to produce a child, but is the child viable? In the continuing the race kind of thing. It is an interesting question, because humans of different races can produce fertile children. But we're talking different species. Truly different species. Like, from other side of the universe, different species. We're not even talking as close as creating a liger or a mule. Those are at least animals on the same planet. Though there are a lot of similarities because you have bilateral diffusion, same number of limbs, obviously breathe the same type of atmosphere. Probably all for the convenience of the story, but still. But that's a lot of levels of compatibility and similarity. Because I just struck me right now, I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute. Half-breeds. So far in nature, half-breeds usually produce a sterile breed. Especially when you're like a mule or a liger. Though there are exceptions to the rule. But that's why it's not a full species. Because it can't consistently reproduce. Though moving on to finishing up our topics. Any last thoughts? Uh, so many things that I want to see what happens next. What's going to happen with Hagar and the generals? What's going to happen with Keith and his mother? What's going to happen with Shiro? And Shiro's reaching out to Lance. So is Lance going to be able to help Shiro? Or is Lance going to be the one to discover the problem? Hmm. Because he's kind of the goofball. He's really can pull it together and he has a strong sense of loyalty yeah he's been showing a lot of promise especially with all the little neat things he's been kind of showing off that he doesn't realize he can do i i, I can wield a sword <laughs> it's kind of a savant thing he doesn't know what he's capable of and i i think we may really see that upcoming especially with what's going on with shiro well this has been our thoughts on Voltron, Legendary Defender, Season 5, Episodes 4 through 6. Hmm. Outro. I was thinking about doing some Voltron quotes, you know, Dino Therms connected, Thrusters are go, let's go Voltron Force. <laughs> but, hey, I'm pretty sure you've heard all that before. So, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around to the end credits. This is part of why we don't do them as a recording. There, there are people who listen, and they deserve some variety for that. We have links to more of Lux's art. There are links to other videos. We have playlists. Before you leave this page, please give it a like. Leave us a comment. Click subscribe if you haven't already, and your subscription feed isn't overflowing. We understand if you have like 100 subscriptions. It's kind of hard to get that 101st one in there. Especially with YouTube rearranging your subscription feed based on what you watch. Fun. So we, we do understand, but please check out more videos and leave some comments on this one. Links to Lux's art. Yeah, there's plenty of Ultron merchandise. I'm sure there's links to Amazon. Lux takes commissions. There's links for that. And then we have 
two other ways if you want to throw money at us. No, it's not like Dipper in Gravity Falls. If you throw money, he's not going to dance. Trust me, that's a good thing. But he will draw pictures. Uh, Patreon starts at a dollar a month with a monthly sketch poll. And Coffee works in increments of three as a one-time pledge. Coffee does not guarantee a sketch. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.